Are you having fun yet? Hopefully you are. Hey guys, Roberto Monaco here with Influenceology. Hopefully you are loving the series. Hopefully you take a lot of notes. In our first video, we talk about the power of storytelling and story selling. Our second video, we talk about presentation structure, how to organize content, how to structure presentation. And today, I want to share with you one strategy that's really, really, really important to your business. And once you adopt the strategy, you're going to be able to communicate more powerfully and have even more influence. We call managing the energy. Very important. It falls under our category in our events. We teach four things, presentation structure, presentation psychology, influence, and presentation delivery. So managing the energy of a presentation and the energy of the room, for example, falls in the category of presentation delivery skills. And today, I want to talk about that. Now, I'll divide this video in three parts. How many parts? Three. Part number one, presentation delivery or managing your energy when you open a video or when you open a presentation. Two, during your presentation. And three, when you close your presentation. So let's talk about opening. Now, most people, they have a hard time understanding the concept of managing your own energy and manage the energy of the room. Now, to be an influencer, you gotta be able to not only manage the energy of the room, what's happening during a presentation, but most important, how you manage your own energy. When you record a presentation, when you're doing a video, you always wanna make sure you're like in a peak state. Tony Robbins talk about a peak state. You wanna make sure every single cell in your body is turned on, yet, you gotta have you gotta have a cool, you gotta be you have a be calm and elegant and deliver a message that's persuasive. When you learn how to manage your state or manage your energy, it's gonna be very, very powerful because your message will be able to have a different level of impact in your clients. Now, when I learned that my first, you know, eight years ago, I used to show up in talks and go like this, like this, literally like this. Hello, I'm here. And I had so much energy. And what happens was some people relate to me because like, oh, this is cool, has our energy. Some people like, why, what is that? Who is this guy? Whoa, it's too much. So in my case, I had to learn to drop and calm my energy level. For some people though, when they open a presentation or a video, they go like this. Um, hello, my name is Roberto Monaco and they don't have this, they have great content, great mind, but they are like my business partner, Jeff Perro talks about mono energetic. You have the same energy and you're kind of boring and you're like, Aah. almost like your dad, right? Beep, 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 the line. So some people, they have to work on the energy level to go up. Now it's important though, let's say when you have, when you're recording a video or doing a live talk, you gotta always calibrate the level of energy of your audience. Now, if you're doing a live presentation, it's easy, right? Because they're right in front of you. When doing a video, you don't know. So in a live audience, if your audience is level five in the energy level, you wanna be a level five. So you build up rapport, and then once you pace the energy level, you can lead them energy level. If, because sometimes, for example, one time many years ago, I spoke for Mary Kay, and I showed up this meeting, these ladies were like party, and the energy level was like crazy. They're level 10. Now, the, when I start a presentation, if I start at level eight, they're gonna be like, who is this guy? He's not powerful enough. So actually, I had to be level 10 right in the beginning. Other presentations that I did, I show up to an accounting office, for example, and people were bored, and it's almost like dead, energy level like three. And at that level, I have to show up to level three, so with the rapport, and then I take them to a higher level. Very, very important distinction. Now, in video though, you don't know, but most likely you're watching this video sitting down, right? You're sitting down on a laptop here, you're working or in Facebook, you're watching this video. You're supposed to be working, but you're learning, you're right? studying, that's good. And you're here, so you're not like jumping around. So your energy level is like maybe five, six. So that's why I don't start videos like going crazy right away. I just don't, I build it up. Very important distinction. Now, second, when you talk about in the middle of a presentation, a great presentation should be like a roller coaster, ups and downs, ups and downs, emotionally. And you change the tonality, you change the voice. By you changing how you feel, then you're gonna cause 
a change in your audience. For example, a good presentation, you talk about different emotions, positive emotions, negative emotions. If you're an influencer, if you've been through a program, you know why you wanna do that. But the same, anyway, you wanna make sure your roller coaster, a good metaphor, imagine a roller coaster goes ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. A good presentation, live presentation does that, and a video, a long video does that as well. For example, in a live training, what you can do, you can bring a chair and, and just go like this, and at some point in the presentation, you just sit down. Can you see me here? All right. You sit down because people are sitting down and you become more at the same level of energy. And then once they're used to, you, you, you give them some time to relax. Then you go up again and you go up and down, up and down with your energy level. Very, very, very important. Now, and the third aspect of a presentation, as I promise you, it is your clothes. Clothes, very important. Some people call... Uh, call to action, right? Is it when you end the presentation? One point in time, I was training a guy who's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant presenter. I mean, the guy was like really good presenter. So he was applying for a job, and I was like, I was the trainer of this company, so I'm just watching him present. And his energy level was like very good, very good, very good, very good. And he knew the script really good, but at the time he closed the presentation, the energy drops like this. Now, I knew right away what happens. Most people, most influencers, most salespeople, they memorize the presentation or they work in a presentation, they're opening the body. When it comes to the close, usually that's the part that they prepare least. Think about your presentation, okay? What is the part that you prepare most in the presentation? Is the opening, is the body? Most people, in my experience, they, they prepare the opening, the body, and the close or the call to action usually don't spend a lot of time. So they become uncertain, number one. The second reason, most people feel uncomfortable asking for the money because of fear of rejection, fear of not being loved anymore. So unconsciously, even though they may know the words, they have this incongruency because I, I really mean it with my words, but I really don't mean it because I'm afraid or I feel uncomfortable, especially in doing presentations. So in that case, by the way, several of my clients I coach Sometimes it's just turn around the beliefs and associations about what does the close or the offer means to them. For some people, like I feel, Roberto, I, I love presenting, speaking, but when I ask people to sign up, I feel like I'm a used card salesman. I feel uncomfortable. Well, guess what? Do you really believe in your product? Because if you do and you have a good close, people love it. Let me give an example. If you watch football, right, American football, during the season, your team is playing, right? Charge is playing, for example. I'm from San Diego here. Then what happens when the, they have half the game, they stop, right? Half time, what happens? Commercials, what do you do? Oh, you go get a beer, go to the bathroom, you do something else. Now, what happens though when Super Bowl time and they play the commercials, what do you do? Do you go, go get a beer, do you go to the bathroom, or you watch the commercials? You do watch the commercials, true? Of course you do. Why? When I ask this question, people say, oh, because it's fun, because it's cool. Well, the fact is, because the commercials, they're entertaining, they're fun, they're unique, they break your pattern, they do something different, get you curious about it, make you laughing. But have you realized that in spite of them or being different, they're still selling you? Yes. And people spend all the time saying, please, please, please sell me, sell me, sell me, sell me. Can you think about that? So people want to be presented with the right product or service if you know how to do it. And the best proof is the Super Bowl commercials. Everybody talks about them. Everybody loves them. Still, the companies are pitching you. They are selling you and me their product and services. Think about that. Question, a good question for you. Is your presentation powerful enough and is your closing or call to action powerful enough like a Super Bowl commercial. So people say, yeah, you know what? Sell me or pitch me or present my ideas because I'm having so much fun and I wanna learn more about what you do. Create cash. Use these strategies, guys. Learn how to manage your energy in the beginning of the presentation, in the middle of the presentation, and in the end of your presentation. I see you in your next video. Guys, take care. Bye-bye.